am the whistler. And I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now the whistler's strange story, The Glass Dime. stepped out of his office on the third floor of the Drake building, and his mood was anything but cheerful. Locking the door behind him, he stopped for a moment, gazed at the lettering on the glass panel. Walter Layton, theatrical agency. A frown crossed his features. And then, shaking his head sadly, he sighed and started down the corridor toward the elevator. You whirl at the sound lock. And then see a tall, heavy-set man rush out of an office at the end of the hall and come running towards you. Hey, what's the idea? What's going on? Get out of the way, you. <laughs> His fist catches you on the point of the jaw, sends you sprawling. And then as you manage to get to your feet again, you see that he's reached the head of the stairs. He turns and levels the gun at you. The bullet whistles past you as you drop to the floor. An instant later, the man disappears down the stairway. Mr. Lake, are you hurt? No, no, I, I guess not, Doc. What happened? I heard the shots from my office. Well, it beats me. I heard some shots. Then a guy came charging out of the coin dealer's office down there. Redworth? Yeah, I tried to stop him, but he bowled me out of the way. Took off. Come on. We'd better see if Redworth's all right. Yeah. Mr. Redworth? Mr. Redworth, there. Oh, Miss Martin, are you all right? Yes, yes. What happened in here? I, I don't know. I was in the back room. Mr. Redworth was out here talking with someone, and well, then I heard the shots. I rushed out and... Here, uh, now, steady. Where's Redworth? Over there, behind the counter. Let's have a look, Clayton. Rentworth dead. I think you'd better call the police. And you say you didn't see this man, Miss Martin? No, Lieutenant, I, I didn't. Uh huh. Now tell me, was Mr. Rentworth expecting anyone? Well, not that I know of. Oh, I'm sure it was an attempt at robbery. As a matter of fact, we were about to close up the office. I see. We'd been in the back room checking the catalogs when the front door buzzer rang. Mr. Rentworth went out to see who it was. Uh-huh. Uh, Lieutenant, yeah? if I may interrupt. Oh, certainly, Doctor. Uh, Mr. Layton here got a good look at the killer. Oh, uh, that's so, Mr. Layton? Yes, I ran into him in the hall right after it happened. He took a couple of shots at me, too. All right, what did he look like? Oh, tall, rugged, around 40, I'd say, dark, square-jawed. Uh-huh. Not much of a description. Well, that'll do fine for now. Oh? Got somebody in mind? <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Miss Martin, I don't suppose you've checked to see if the killer took anything? No, I'll have to take inventory. He couldn't have stolen anything of real value, however. You see, all the rare coins are kept in the safe. And it hasn't been opened. Uh -huh. However, several trays out here on the counter were upset. Coins scattered all over the floor. But I'll let you know if anything's missing. Oh, fine, fine. I'd appreciate that. Now, Mr. Layton, I want to keep in touch with you in the event we line up for a man. Identification. Oh, sure, sure. I have a theatrical agency on this floor. Only I might not be around much longer. Business isn't so good. Well, do you live here in town? Yes, 37 Oakwood Place. Apartment B. 37 Oakwood 
place, apartment B, right. Now, if you're finished with me, Lieutenant, I'd like to run on home. I've had a rough day. Oh, sure, Mr. Layton, sure. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Layton. Well, well. <laughs> Miss Martin from Mr. Redworth. This is a surprise. Not disturbing you, am I? No, no. I'm just having a quiet drink all by myself. Come in. Mm, nice, cozy little apartment you have. Yeah. And the nicest thing about it is the uh, rent's paid for another whole month. Here, sit down, sit down. Thank you. How about a drink? I could use one. It's been a rather hectic day. Yeah. But too bad about Redworth. Poor old guy. Shall I come right to the point, Mr. Layton? Oh, take your time. It isn't often I have such charming company. What have you done with the glass dime? The what? The glass dime. D-I-M-E. What is this? A gag? No gag. It's a rare collector's item. Once belonged to the collection of the late Justin W. Glass. Hence the name. Glass dime. <laughs> Cute. So what's it to do with me? You picked it up at the office tonight. I did? Oh, quite by accident, of course. The coin was on the counter near the telephone. I saw you pick it up, toy with it while you called the police. And uh, without thinking, you must have dropped it into your pocket. Why don't you look? Your drink, Miss Martin. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers? Well? Hmm? Oh, the coin. Try the right coat pocket. Well, what do you know? This it? That's it. Look, if you saw me take the coin, why didn't you tell the police? Well, that would have been most embarrassing for you. Even though you had taken it by accident. Yeah, the lieutenant might not have believed it. I believe it. Those things happen. Hmm. What's this glass dime worth? A couple of bucks? Ten, maybe? Five thousand dollars. Five thousand? As I said, a rare item. Well, well. Hey, wait a minute. I thought you told the lieutenant that all the expensive stuff was kept in the safe. That's right. And yet this coin worth five grand was in one of the trays on the counter. Mr. Rentworth had been showing it to a customer this afternoon. I uh, forgot to put it in the safe. Really? That was sort of careless of you, wasn't it? Very. Maybe you had plans for the glass dime, huh? Maybe. All right, Edith. It is Edith, isn't it? What do you say we stop playing games, huh? We can make $60,000 if you're interested, Wally. It is Wally, isn't it? 60000 I thought you said it was worth five. That's right. But 12 times five is 60. I can have a dozen copies of the coin made, and we can peddle them in different parts of the country and abroad. Oh? I know the man who'll do the job. I met him through Wentworth. Oh, he's a real artist. He keeps the original, and we get the dozen for you. Sixty grand, huh? We uh, we split fifty-fifty. That's right. Huh. What's the matter? I'm just curious about something. Why cut me in on this? Two reasons. First, I don't feel safe with the man who's going to do the job. He uh, might double cross me. He wouldn't dare try anything if I brought my. Uh, partner along. One with broad shoulders. Okay, that's the first reason. What's the other? Uh, well, let's say I enjoy the protection of a handsome man with broad shoulders. Well, is it a deal? <laughs> it's a deal, sweetheart. The 
future looks bright, doesn't it, Wally? Yes, and all because of the glass dime. A rare collector's item you picked up in Amos Rentworth's office shortly after the coin dealer was murdered. You've made a deal. Agreed to a partnership with the exciting, attractive Edith Martin, the dead man's secretary. A deal you hope will net the two of you $60,000. You don't bother to go down to your office the following day. No, you sleep late and then put in a call to Edith at the coin dealer. Morning, sweetheart. Hey, you mean afternoon, don't you? Just get up? Yeah. Thought I'd take a well-earned rest. I oh, wish I could. I've been busy checking accounts and taking inventory with Mr. Redworth's lawyer, B.D. Eyes Burson. Can he hear you? <laughs> no, he isn't back from lunch yet. Going to be tied up with him all day? I'm afraid so. Mm. How about dinner with your new partner? Oh, love it. You name it. Pasquetti's. It's in the commercial district. You know the place? Right. Seven o'clock? Seven o'clock. I'll... Uh oh Someone at the door. I'll see you tonight, huh? Bye. Yeah, what are you... Hello, Mr. Layton. Uh, you're Lieutenant... Uh... Lieutenant Conlon. Yeah, that's right. Uh, what can I do for you, Lieutenant? You can take a ride with me down to police headquarters. <laughs> What? <laughs> no, no. No need for alarm, Mr. Layton. Just like to have you look over some photographs, that's all. After all, you're the only person who got a good look at Brentworth's killer. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Hey, wait a minute. Didn't you say last night you had an idea who the killer might be? Yeah. Yeah, but that was last night. We checked on the man. He's back east. Oh, uh, and he's not the murderer? Nope, he's not. All right, Lieutenant. Oh, uh, come on in. I'll be with you as soon as I get dressed. You spend the rest of the afternoon at police headquarters looking over the photographs in the rogues' gallery. But you fail to recognize the man you saw running from Rentworth's office. Leaving headquarters, you head for your rendezvous with Edith. Arrive at the restaurant at 6.30, a half hour early. To kill time, you saunter down the street, looking into one shop window after another. Finally, you stopped in front of a sporting goods store. When you're suddenly aware that someone is standing close to you, you turn and stare and your knees almost buckle. Yes, Wally. It's the man who killed Rentworth. You're surprised, buddy. You... I've been tailing you ever since you left police headquarters. I figured them cops should call you to get a look at the mug book. Look, what do you want? I'm sorry, buddy, but you're the only guy in the world can put a finger on me for killing an old Rentwood. So with you out of the way, I got nothing to worry about. Oh, now, wait a minute. I, I I'm won't... I'm sorry, but I can't take no chances. Come on, we're going to take a walk. And remember... One false move, I'll let you have it. I ain't got my hand in my coat pocket just to keep it warm, you see. Let's go. You'd like to run, wouldn't you, Wally? But you can't. You seem rooted to the spot until you feel the gun dig into your side, and then somehow your legs respond. As you move down the block, the killer at your side, you want to yell out to the people in the street. Your throat is dry, paralyzed with fear. And then as the killer leads you into a dark alleyway, you see your chance. A stack of piled up crates nearby. You step aside quickly and shove him into the building. As they come toppling down on him, you start running down the alley. Station. Uh, I'll pick you up in ten minutes. Forget it, sweetheart. I'm grabbing a cab to police headquarters. 
Police headquarters? Why? Look, my life isn't worth a plug nickel with that killer on the loose. I'm the only one who can identify him. I want protection. Wally. Uh, well, Wally, you can't go to the police. What are you talking about? You want me to get killed? No, no, of course not. But going to the police would ruin our plans. What do you mean? Please, Wally, I'll explain everything when I pick you up. Listen, Edith... Stay I... right where you are, darling. I'll be there in ten minutes. <laughs> you see, Wally, if you go to the police for protection, they'll put a man to watch you. Us. And we can't have him follow us to Sully's place. Sully? The contact I told you about. The man who's going to make the phony dime. Uh. I need you with me, Wally. He won't try anything funny if you're around. Yeah, so in the meantime, I'm a walking target. Sit and duck for a killer. Not for long, Wally. I've made arrangements to see Sully tonight. Tonight? I thought we decided to wait till things cool off a little. We can't wait. Mr. Burson knows that last dime is missing. What? You told him. I had to. He asked me about it while we were taking inventory. Look, you said it hadn't been listed in Rentworth's catalog. That's right. But Rentworth must have told Burson about it when he bought the coin a few days ago. You see, Burson's sort of a silent partner. Do the police know? Well, with Burson knowing, I had to tell them. Last Dime is already getting a lot of publicity. I heard the story on the radio an hour ago, and I'm sure it'll get a big play in the morning paper. The early editions are probably headlining it. They're on the streets by now. Yeah. All of which means we have a very hot dime on our hands. Look, how will that affect your contact, Sully, or whatever his name is? It won't affect Sully if we get it to him tonight. We'll probably have to give him part of our profits on the phony dimes on account of the additional risk, but don't worry, we'll come out all right. Okay, okay. But what about this killer on the loose? What are we going to do about him? Listen, Walt. After we've set the deal with Sully, you can go to the police. Get all the protection you want. How soon can we talk to him? Well, he lives just this side of Santa Barbara. We can drive up the coast highway and be there in two hours. You, uh... You do have the coin with you. Yeah. Okay, you Let's get going. You're kind of quiet, Wally. Hmm? Oh, sorry. Look, uh, is Percy? No, I can wait till we hit Santa Barbara. Well, why wait? Life's too short. And who knows if there'll be a cocktail bar as inviting looking as that one up ahead. Huh? <laughs> All right, you've twisted my arm. I'll swing in. Park in the back. All right. How about the booth in the corner? I'd rather sit at the bar. Do you mind? I'm not choosing. I, uh, I can get a better view of the highway. What? What'll it be, folks? A pair of bourbon and sodas. Okay, Edith? Oh, fine. That's easy. Wally. Yeah? What you said about watching the highway. I, I don't understand. There he is. Wentworth's killer. I knew it. Wally. Here you are, folks. That'll be, uh... He's pulled in. Sitting out there waiting for us. Huh? What'd you say, mister? Is there a back way out of here, Max? Back way, sure, mister. Only what about these drinks? I, I only... Here, just... here, this will cover the drinks. Come on, Edith. We want the back way. But Wally... You heard me. Go on. The killer's getting out of the car, heading in here. Get going, Edith. What was it all about, Wally? Why'd we run out like that? That guy who killed Rentworth picked us up again. We didn't get enough of a start. Are you sure? Yes. I passed his car in Santa Monica. He's been trailing us, Edith. That's why I pulled up at the bar. I wanted to be sure. Maybe we can lose him this time. Step on it. I'll turn on the radio. It's time for the news. See if there's anything more on the glass dime. And that's about all on Korea for the moment. 
And aside from Senator Watson's speech, which we've already covered, everything was quiet on the political front. The murderer of Amos Redworth, coin dealer, is still at large, but as announced earlier, a famous 10-cent piece known as the glass dime worth thousands of dollars is missing from the Redworth holding. A bulletin just received offers a reward of $1,000 for its recovery. And now, let's take a look at the sports That's enough. That dime's plenty hot, Edith. It? it won't make any difference once we get it to Sully. If we get it to Sully. That killer's with us again. He's quite a ways back, but he's gaining on us. Look, look, there's a side road up ahead. Turn into it. All right, Bobby. Now drive on up the road away. We'll see what happens. Well? He's turned off the highway, too. He's on our trail again. Come on, you just step on it. Come on, come on. Can't you speed this crate up a little? But look, the road's narrow, full of curves. I can't go any faster. Well, you got to. He's closing in on us. Only a few more turns, baby. Road straight was out after that. Way. Look out, Edith. The curve up ahead. Cut in. Cut in hard. Edith. Edith. You, you okay? Yes, I, I think so. Come on. We're going to have to leave the car. We can't possibly back it out of this ditch. But I can try. No, 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 we haven't time. Come on, we'll head down the ravine. Try to get back to the highway. You leave the car stalled in the ditch. Hurry down the ravine. And a short time later, you approach the highway near a cluster of buildings at the intersection where you turned off. You're in luck, Wally. Yes. The small diner across the highway is open. Molly, you... we'll stick close to the buildings on this side of the road until the traffic thins out. And then we'll duck across. Wait a minute, Wally. Yeah. What's the matter? Look, up ahead. He's come out of the side road. Yeah. Doubled back. Probably figured we'd try for the highway. You'll see us. Not if we can duck into one of these stores. There's a little hamburger hut. Yeah, it's closed. Let's go around the back. This door isn't heavy. We'll force it open. Oh, hurry, Wally, hurry. I'll get it. off in here than we were before. No, no, we're not. Look across the road. Where? A police car. Parked alongside the diner. Yeah. The two highway patrolmen inside that diner having dinner. Look, we got to get word to those patrolmen. We've got as long to live as it takes two cops to finish their dinner. The two highway patrolmen in the diner across the road are a welcome sight, aren't they? You're certain that as long as they're in the diner, Rentworth's killer will not make a move to eliminate you, the only witness against him. And then the blood almost freezes in your veins as you see the killer step from his car and start walking slowly toward the hamburger hut where you and Edith Martin have taken refuge. Suddenly you realize that the two highway policemen calmly enjoying their dinner are no hindrance to the killer unless you can somehow get word to them before Rentworth's slayer reaches you. He spotted us, Edith. He's coming toward the hut. But the policemen... They don't know who he is. They're not even looking this way. We ought to phone that diner. Talk to those cops. There ought to be a phone. Oh, there's a pay phone. Over there, behind the counter. Oh, good. Uh, you got any change, Edith? No. No, I left my purse back at the car. Don't you have any? Uh, just a four-bit piece, two pennies, a couple of bills, and the dime. 
You mean the glass time? Yeah. Oh, no, Wally. Not the glass time. Not after all we've gone through. Well, it's sad I get killed. Besides, we can get it back when they open the coin box. With a thousand dollar reward offered? And all the publicity about it? Oh, never, Wally. We'll never get it back. Think, Wally, $60,000. You think. I want to live. 